Hi, and welcome to this lesson on finding empirical and molecular formulas. So a little bit later we're going to talk about the difference between those two. But first let's take a look at this problem and make sure we get the right setup in place before we go and do any calculations. So here it says a compound is 40% carbon, 6.66% hydrogen, and 53.33% oxygen. It has a molecular weight of 180 grams per mole. Now, we have to find the molecular formula and the empirical formula for a compound like this. So since they give us the molecular weight of the actual molecule, the entire compound, that means that the formula that we're able to find will be the molecular formula. Your molecular formula is the number of atoms of each different element that you have in an entire compound. The empirical formula is going to be that molecular formula fully reduced. So for example, if a compound was C2H4, you can reduce that to CH2 for the empirical formula. And we'll take a look at practicing that a little bit later. But now for calculating the molecular formula, let's take a look at these percentages. So 40% of our compound is carbon. That means 40% out of the 180 grams is going to be comprised of carbon. So if we go to do a calculation there, to find out what percentage of 180 40 represents, 40% of 180 is going to be calculated by doing 0.40 times 180. And when we do that calculation, if you multiply that out, you're going to get 72. So that means there's going to be 72 grams of carbon out of the 180 grams total that we have. We're going to do this same calculation for each of the others, hydrogen and oxygen. So here, for 6.66, that would be 0 0.06, repeating, times 180. And when you multiply that out, you're going to get 12. So we're going to have 12 grams of hydrogen. And when we do the same calculation for the oxygen, 0.53 repeating, times 180 is going to give us a total of 96 grams of oxygen. So we have the grams of each that comprise our total of 180 and if you wanted to check just to make sure if you add 72 plus 12 you get 84 and 84 plus 96 does give you 180 so that's always a quick check that you can do after that first step in a problem like this to make sure that you're still on track. So here we have 72 grams carbon, 12 of hydrogen, 96 of oxygen but we don't know how many of each we have. And what we have to do in this case to find out the number of carbons that would comprise 72 grams is we have to use our periodic table and look at the atomic mass. And on our periodic table we see that for carbon, if you look at the bottom of that square on your periodic table, carbon has an atomic mass of 12 grams. So 72 grams of carbon would indicate that you have 6 of those carbons and we calculate that by dividing by 12. So here for carbon if you do 72 divided by 12, we get 6. So we're going to have 6 carbons in our molecular formula. And that would be symbolized with a subscript of 6. Now let's see if we can do that same calculation for hydrogen and oxygen using the information from our periodic table to calculate the number of hydrogens we have represented by 12 grams and the number of oxygens we have represented by 96 grams. So in this case, we look at hydrogen on the periodic table, we're going to see it all the way up there in the top left. And if we look on the bottom, we see that the atomic mass of hydrogen is 1. So if you do 12 grams divided by 1, that gives us a total of 12 hydrogens. So we'll write that into our molecular formula next. We have C6 and we have H12. And lastly, for the oxygens, if some of you are working through this problem and you're a little bit ahead of where we are, then we can check our work now. Here we'll have 96 grams. And we're dividing by the atomic mass of oxygen, which in this case, if you look on your periodic table, we'll see that that's 16. And that goes in six times, which means we have six oxygens. So if we take a look at our molecular formula, we have C6H12O6, meaning this molecule being described here is actually a molecule of glucose. 
And then for the empirical formula, we're going to take these subscripts and we're going to look for the greatest common factor and divide by that number in order to reduce the numbers that we have. So we have 6, 12, and 6. The greatest common factor for all three of those numbers is how much? If you said 6, you're correct. 6 is the largest number that divides evenly into all three of those subscripts. 6 goes into 6 one time, so that means when we reduce we'll have one carbon. 6 goes into 12 twice, so when we reduce that we'll have two hydrogens. And 6 goes into oxygen. 6 oxygens divided by 6 goes in one time, so we'll have one oxygen for our empirical formula. So your empirical formula is going to be your molecular formula once it's been fully reduced. And you're going to reduce that in a similar way to the way that you would reduce any fraction where you try to find the greatest common factor that you can divide into both terms. For more questions, please feel free to visit our website at www.sandersontestprep.com. The link is in the description below. Thanks for watching.